today we have one of the leading experts. I mean, he's one of the most accurate forecasters I've seen because his expertise is demographics. And it's a saying in any kind of marketing, you know, things like this, dem demography is destiny. So when you watch what the demographics are doing, you can almost predict the future. So Harry's, Harry's, Harry's work is extremely brilliant. This great boom ahead and he is, he's attacked like I'm attacked uh, because we're go counter to the popular culture of bullshit in markets. And so um, we, 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 we got through the problem it's a lot of it just mismanagement of debt and printing money to solve problems and all this. And we're now in a triple bubble. We have a real estate bubble, stock market bubble, and bond bubble. And every time Harry speaks, he says the solution is treasuries and bonds and all this. And FYI, I don't own any, I don't own any paper assets. I don't have any stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs. And the reason as being entrepreneurs, we don't need them. We can create our own assets. And when we talk about real estate, we're talking about income producing real estate, not commercial and not residential. You know, I'm not, I'm not gambling on my house like the baby boomers are. So every time Harry talks about the bond market, I want to stop and ask him what it is. So here we are. This is my opportunity to ask Harry a very important question. What is, why are you um, excited about, not excited, but you confident in bonds is a thing. Okay. What, what happens? So, so all of this stimulus on top of the greatest demographic boom in history, but which did start to fail. So all this stimulus, stimulus throws money into the economy. What do, what do governments do with this? Stimulus? They buy financial assets. They start with bonds, but the more money goes in bonds, it will trickle into higher valuation stocks and real estate because that's where the returns are. So what we have now, and I got a number on this, it's close to 600 trillion dollars in financial assets globally okay 600 trillion that's about seven times global gdp uh at 95 trillion and normally financial assets are a premium two maybe three times so the biggest problem in the world is all financial assets even bonds and when you have a crash like this when these financial assets start to crumble the, the money has to go somewhere. It goes into the safest areas. So it is the, the, the income producing real estate, multifamily mostly, and it is the treasury bonds, the highest quality government bonds. If the US government can print enough money to keep a dumb bubble going, they'll certainly print money to pay their <laughs> bonds off, their treasury bonds, okay? You don't have to worry about a default on 30 or 10 year treasury bonds. And again, I go back and say, okay, let's look at 2008. When I look at the 2008 crisis, that was like 1929 to 30 dude coming in, except this time massive stimulus, which they didn't do back then. So they come out of it, okay? But that's when you see things go down, financial assets go down, flirting with deflation. This time we're gonna deflate more because they've tried to pump it up and it's failing anyway. So financial assets, keep falling so the money has to go somewhere so what it goes it goes into the safest bonds and the highest quality real estate which is the people again real estate has gotten just as overvalued as stock the people who are renting real estate multifamily, the people who will need it more than ever even people who would rather buy can't buy in a bad market and hard to get loans it's the safe areas, it's the US treasury bonds, which is the best bonds in the world. Other government bonds are good. Nothing's gonna beat a 30 year treasury bond and nothing's gonna beat in the real estate area, multifamily rental real estate, because people who are thinking of buying and it's overpriced, and then they see the prices fall, they're gonna be more scared. So no. renting will- yeah, So Harry, the, the big distinction is, you know, there was a thing called junk bonds and this bond and corporate bonds and all that. So you're saying government back, like the U.S. government. The, the high, yeah, yes. Triple A corporate. And in the world, even who's the best house in a bad neighborhood? Already been for Is Europe in trouble? Yes. Has Japan been in trouble forever? Yes. OK. U.S. is still the best house in a bad neighborhood. So, and our bonds went up in 2008 crisis, 45 percent treasury bonds, 30 year treasury bonds. And they're going to go up more than that at this time. So you go to the safest places again. Where can you get predictable rentals, even in bad times from real estate? And that's from apartments and multifamily. 
and where are the best bonds that will be paid no matter what, when every all financial assets have to go. Now here's my number from 600 trillion worldwide, they're gonna have to come back down to about 250 to 300 trillion. Now think about this, globally, three times global GDP 95, $300 trillion, give or take, 250 trillion, disappears in financial assets and doesn't come back for a long time. That's the big news in the next coming years. So as long as you're protected from that in the right real estate and in the right bonds, the highest quality, longest term, I, if I could buy one thing, it'd be 30 year treasury bond. Okay, US government. US, US, not Tanzania. Right. <laughs> and what kind Not of even Europe. Europe has much worse demographics and already been slower than us. U.S. as a developed country is going to come out of this after a damn near short term depression, the best. And our millennial generation, Europe doesn't have one, by the way, OK, is going to be the best in the developed world. So we come out of this better um, and our bonds our U.S. Treasury bonds, 30-year Treasury bonds would be my number one recommendation right now. Okay. And not that you buy ZROZ, Z-R-O-Z, which is an ETF that balances 20 and 30 and leans towards the 30, so 25-year average. Would you give that, would you go, we don't rec make recommendations, but if you do it, we'll let, let it go. What, what, does the, what, what do you think is the best ETF? Z-R-O-Z is a 25-year average, so it's a blend of 10 and 30-year Treasury bonds. They lean towards the 30. TLT is about 50-50, okay? So the Zero, Z -R -O -Z ETF will go up about 50% faster than the TLT, and the TLT has already done very well since this crisis set in at Pop okay. and Boom, and we'll do much better when we get it to work. In 2008, the worst of it was in late 2008, TLT and Zeroz went to the moon. Good. Thank you. That clarifies it because in my mind, I still remember junk bonds and all that stuff. Oh, junk bonds, junk bonds. So the the highest risk bonds go down the most, more like stocks, right. and the highest quality, like thirty year Treasury bonds, go up the most as the safe haven. And gold, which did well in the early parts of the last two thousand eight, went down forty to forty five percent in the latest stages. So gold was not the worst place to be, but it it, it in the, the end it went down with everything else. You so gold, gold, I'd rather have yeah. gold than anything right. but these treasury bonds. Right. You said something. Why, why, does it, why doesn't Europe have a millennial? What happened there? Because they're older. They've been around longer. They've been richer longer. And people who are rich have fewer kids. Poor people have more kids and rich people have fewer. You know that. You're a rich dad guy. I understand that. But I, I didn't know Europe. I didn't know Europe. We, we yeah. should promote rich people having more kids. But the natural propensity, <laughs> people that have a life, say more kids ruins that life and it's better to have two kids and be done poor people just keep having kids but and to you you know to your point here multi-family um it's exactly what we're seeing because we have we we do have a lot of multi-family rents rents are going up demand for apartments are going up if you have something where the income only goes up when all stocks and earnings are going down is that not attractive of course it is <laughs> Very attractive. Hey, I have a question, and I, I don't I don't understand this. So, um, I was told recently that the um, the inter the yield on short term bonds is actually greater than long term bonds. Does that make any sense? Yeah, what, what and it should be the opposite. Long term, you're taking greater risk, so it should be higher. But when people see a downturn and deflation in prices and inflation going down and maybe going negative into deflation then then that's why uh, those yields respond differently. That's a short term phenomenon. And, and, and what I want to do now when, when it, and the biggest thing I get is people say, Harry, you're recommending 30 year treasury bonds. I'm not. They actually I'm recommending them for the next 20, 30 years. <laughs> no, they're for the crash. They're the safe haven in the crash. Okay. More than gold, way better than gold. And when it, when the crash happens, I don't want to hold 30 year treasury bonds at one to two percent yields or zero. I want to get back into the best part of the world. And it's not going to be North America anymore. It's going to be better than Europe. But Asia is going to be better than North America and continue to be. That's simple. Demo There's nothing simpler than demographics than that. We're better than Europe in the developed world. And as things move forward, all the growth is going to be in Asia, East Asia, going towards India, which 
after I die, will be the richest, greatest, largest country in the world. 